Uh, hey, uh, welcome to Furley First Baptist Church this morning, and uh, we, um, you know, we've been probably kind of going stir crazy in our houses and different things, but this is an old song from years ago, and uh, we love to sing it around here. And you know, with uh, with Jesus, if uh, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, and uh, this song says, "I feel like traveling on." you, Lord, for the hope that we have in you. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that uh, even though uh, we leave this life, Lord, you have promised uh, the everlasting life, Lord God. And Lord, uh, we just thank you for loving us so much that you came and, and gave your only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have that eternal life, Lord God. And Lord, we just uh, come to you in praise this morning, Lord God. We come to you, Lord, in, in worship. Lord, we come to you in preaching your word, Father. And Lord, we just pray, Father God, that Lord, we would do it for an audience of one. We pray, Father God, that Lord, uh, you would see our heart's desire, and that would be for you. And Lord, uh, uh, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory. We pray in Jesus' name. And your church said, Amen. Amen. Okay, our uh, reading uh, this morning is... Um, going to be out of uh, the book of Proverbs, and I just want to say happy Mother's Day, and um, you know, uh, Proverbs uh, 31 has uh, got uh, some uh, important uh, message to us about uh, moms in there, so praise God. Good morning. Your, your mic. Good morning. Proverbs. 31, 10 through 31. The price of a virtuous woman. 
Who can a virtuous woman, for a price far above rubies, the heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good, and not evil, all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant ships, she bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it's yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it. With the fruit of her hands she planteth a vineyard. That girdeth her loins with strength, and strengthen her for her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, for her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands to the spindle, and her hands hold as a staff. She stretches out her hands to the poor, yea, she reaches her, forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She marketh her her coverings of tapestry, her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen, and selleth it, and delivereth girdles unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth, she openeth her mouth, with wisdom in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up, and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellence they of all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she, vow be she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her, mans, her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. Amen. 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 You know, because of God's amazing grace, He has set us free. The Word of God says, Who the Son of God has set free, He is free indeed. And uh, thank God for the freedom in Christ Jesus.
says casting all of our care upon him because he does care for us and so uh, we just praise God that uh, uh, he is a God that takes care of his children it is a privilege to call God father and it's a privilege to hear the father call us his uh, sons and daughters and uh, God will take care of you of Jesus around here and um, it is wonderful grace and it uh, reached even me and it reaches all the lost and uh, let's just sing wonderful grace of Jesus <laughs>
The Lord is uh, worthy of our worship, and uh, we uh, want to encourage people to uh, give, just uh, as you have uh, purposed in your heart. You know, we um, don't, uh, you know, with this COVID virus and different things, we haven't been uh, passing the offering bags, but, you know, the Lord, is, uh, the Lord has got us through. The Lord, uh, through your worship, has uh, or is getting us through just fine. And so we just want to encourage each one to give just as they have purpose in their heart. Not grudgingly or out of compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And uh, there is a link on YouTube uh, where you can uh, give by, uh, donate by PayPal. Uh, also, uh, if you uh, want to just send in uh, your tithe and offering to a Firmly First Baptist Church at Post Office Box 617, Firmly, Nevada, 89408. Uh, you're encouraged to do that. And uh, we want you to be blessed, and we want you to bless God. And uh, if you can't give uh, the right way, if you can't give cheerfully, uh, don't send it in. I mean, you know, this is, a, this is a, a, an act of worship. And so uh, we, uh, we want to worship the Lord. The Lord is worthy of worship. The Lord did not spare any expense when he bought uh, our soul because Jesus himself offered up his soul as an offering for you and I. And uh, he bank uh, God bankrupted heaven in order to buy us back, his own creation. He became his creation. I, I can't figure it all out. But, and uh, the thoughts... Uh, are uh, too wonderful for me a lot of times when I think of the grace and the mercy of God. But uh, give just as you have purposed in your heart. And uh, we will praise God uh, for that. Let's uh, go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we call upon your name. And Lord, I pray for the ones uh, that uh, give. Lord, I pray, Father, that you would bless them. As your word says, give and it shall be given. Lord, we thank you, Father, for uh, this time. Of worship and Lord uh, we give uh, as we do all the service we give this unto you and Lord uh, we um, uh, we just pray in Jesus' name Amen, Amen. Worthy of worship <laughs>
the meditation of our heart be well pleasing and acceptable to you, our strength and our Redeemer, Lord. And, and Lord, we just again commit this service to you. We deny Satan access in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you for giving us that name to pray in. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I wish you happy Mother's Day, and I know that um, we have one mother in our church that her son, adult son, is uh, dying of cancer. Uh, right now, we're praying for her, and um, we just pray that uh, God of all comfort would uh, comfort their hearts and lives, give them peace that passes understanding. And, um, you know, uh, when you think of your mom, I, I know I think of uh, my mom sometimes, and, and my dad too, but um, my mom, uh, she was a special person in my life, you know, I, and, uh, and my mom could get a hold of God when she needed to get a hold of God. And uh, I just, uh, you know, admire that about her. And, uh, and different things. And uh, my mom could actually get a hold of a belt, too. Um, and, uh, you know, she, was, she could get a hold of a lot of stuff. And, uh, you know, and, um, or if uh, she didn't have anything handy, uh, she would slap the back of her, her shoulder with her hand. And, you know, that was aggravating there. But uh, anyway, you know, she, she loved us and, and uh, prayed for us. And, she knew how to get a hold of, uh, of heaven when she needed to. I remember being about five years old and we were moving back from Texas and, and uh, we, uh, we were following her in, uh, in her car uh, and uh, the, my dad and my little brother and my big sister and my grandmother were in the truck cab um, uh, and with a, uh, like a U-Haul trailer on the back. And, uh, right about, uh, well, we were moving from Texas, and right about Bowie, Texas, uh, the truck had a blowout, and um, the truck turned over and um, whipped the trailer off. And when the truck turned over, it sheared off the gas cap, because it was on the side of the truck, and spilling gas on the highway, the truck was sliding across the highway. And uh, I saw my mom get a hold of God. Right there, it wasn't even a hesitation. I don't know who was driving our car because she had her hands raised, you know. But she got a hold of God at a, at a very young age. I understood that my mom could get a hold of God. I miss her. She died a couple years ago and miss her a lot. And um, she prayed for every one of her kids every day. She prayed for every one of her grandkids every day. And I am so grateful to God for giving me that special mom in my life. And um, I have been blessed more than others sometimes uh, with a mom that knew how to get a hold of God. And, hey, not every mom can do that, you know, but mine could. And I knew I could never get away with nothing 
because God was going to rat me out to order, you know, and different things. But anyway, I thank God for, for my mom. And, uh, you know, uh, it turned out okay. I mean, uh, had to get another truck and different things, but uh, we got some furniture destroyed. And I think my grandmother had a couple broke ribs and, you know, a couple bangs and bruises, but... But uh, there it was, and, and I don't remember this, but my mom testified to this. You know, the Lord says that He'll, he'll uh, send angels to help you. And the truck was on its side, and uh, according to my mom, she said this, this really tall guy. She didn't know how tall he was. But he could reach up. And open the door. From on top of that truck. And then he. Then he you know. Then he left. Yeah. So. God. Will take care. Of you. You know it may not. The circumstances may not be. All that great sometimes. You know, the circumstances, uh, uh, you know, you might have to go through some trial, and you will have to go through some trial. But God will take care of you. Now, I want, to, uh, I want us to go to Genesis. Genesis chapter 1. And uh, just uh, show us some verses here out of Genesis. And um, how would you like the responsibility... Moms of being the mother of all living. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, we're going to start at verse 26. It says, um, And God said, Now all through, uh, all through uh, Genesis uh, chapter 1, it says, and, and God said, you know, so uh, when God says something, He speaks, He speaks a creation, doesn't He? When God says things, uh, things happen. And, and like in verse 3, it says, And God said, Let there be light. And in verse 6, And God said, Let there be a firmament, firmament in the midst of the waters. Verse 9, God said, Let the waters under heaven be gathered together. Uh, in verse 11, And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass and herb. And in verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament, firmament of heaven. And then in verse 20, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that have life, and the fowl that fly above the earth and open firmament of heaven. And, and so in verse 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind. And it was so. So if God says it, it is so. Okay? I just want to let you know because... What I'm leading up to is what God says is what matters. And in verse 26 it says, And God said, Let us make man in our own image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowls of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image in the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Now I want you to notice that God in the beginning created them male and female. There was no multiple choice at this point. I mean God said let us create man in uh, our image and he created them male and female and God blessed them and God said to them be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and every creeping thing that uh, moveth upon the earth. And God said, there it is again, Behold, I have given you every herb uh, bearing seed which is upon the face of the earth and every tree which is, in the, which, uh, is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat and to every beast of the earth and to every fowl of the air and to everything that creepeth upon the earth wherein there is life. I have given every green herb for meat and it was so there it is again it was so because God said it and God saw everything that he had made and behold it was very good 
It wasn't just so-so. God said it was very good. It was very good. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. See, God said it was very good. He didn't say, well, I kind of blew it there. You know, uh, I later on, you know, if they want to change their sex, they, you know, they'll have that option. No. When he created man and woman, he said it was very good. And so, uh, you know, there's people in today's world that say, well, you know, I think God made a mistake. I think, you know, I'm not the, the person that I need to be. Well, that's not from God. That's from Satan, folks. It is a satanic lie. And so we need to understand. Uh, Genesis chapter 2, 18. Genesis chapter 2, 18. It says this. And the, uh, and the Lord said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord uh, God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, uh, that, was, uh, that was the name thereof. I remember when I was a child and, and I, I really liked horses. And I told my mom and dad, I said, well, when Adam named a horse, he really did a good job. You know, of course, I didn't know what I was saying. But I mean, you know, I thought that was a good name because I liked horses, you know. And um, so uh, Adam named every... Now, can you imagine the mental capacity that Adam must have had? Now, let me ask you this. Can you go to the dictionary and memorize every name of every animal that ever lived? No, we can't do that. Because, but Adam could. Because uh, he, had, uh, he, had, he was, uh, uh, you know, in the image of God. He was, uh, he was the firstborn of God, if you will. And so Adam uh, had this incredible mental capacity where he could do that. I mean, uh, even scientists nowadays, they say that we only use about 10% of our brain. And I know people that use a lot less than that. But I mean, uh, anyway, we need to understand that Adam had this amazing mental capacity. And so... Uh, in verse 20, and Adam gave names to all the cattle and the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found uh, help meat for him. So um, Adam, he was just, you know, he had, they had the animals, male and female and everything, but uh, there wasn't no uh, uh, equal for Adam. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh in instead thereof and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the to the man and Adam said this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh and they were both naked man and his wife and we're not ashamed. Because why? Because the light of God covered them. Why? Because they were innocent. And different things. And in Genesis 3.20. Genesis 3.20. And Adam called his, his wife's name Eve. Because she was the mother of all living. And to Adam also and his wife did the Lord God make coats of skins and clothe them. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just pray, Lord, this morning that, Lord, we would understand some of these foundational truths that are put forth in your word. Lord, I pray, Father God, that, Lord, people would quit acting uh, the way they're not supposed to. I pray that people would quit throwing and uh, tossing the word of God behind them. And Lord, I pray that they would receive your word in faith. And Lord, to be who they were created to be. In Jesus' name, amen. The mother of all living. Now, how would you like to have that title? The mother of all living. And we know that the mother of all living, uh, she didn't, um, she wasn't perfect. 
I mean, as he called her the mother of all living, uh, after the, Satan had deceived her and different things. And so uh, then she was the mother of all living. And I just want to understand this morning, I want us to understand some foundational truths out of the Word of God. Because, uh, you know, uh, the things that we make up in our mind are not necessarily the truth. The things that people are making up in their minds about their sexuality today is not necessarily the truth uh, out of the Word of God. Because God saw it, God said, and then God saw it, and He said, it is very good. And so when we, uh, when we try to change our identity, when we try to change uh, our, you know, our, our, uh, uh, who we are and different things and get outside of God's will, uh, we are saying, God, you made a mistake. God, you, uh, you know, I am not supposed to be who I am. And I'll tell you, that does not come from God. It comes from the devil. And we need to understand that. Because, you know, a lot of times, you know, in our churches and different things, we have, we have uh, people uh, that uh, want to believe the lie of the devil instead of the truth of God's word. A lot of times people will seek out uh, preachers that will tickle their ears and, and different things uh, because they don't want to hear foundational truth. They want to hear uh, something that uh, is a lie from the devil. They want to hear something that will agree uh, with their convoluted thinking. You see, we are not to change uh, the word of God. We are to allow the God, word of God to change us. And it is in, and, uh, I'm going to give this verse to us again on foundational truth. Uh, Matthew chapter 28, 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying... All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Amen. And so we need to understand that these foundational truths uh, we need to be a sharing with others. Today we will, uh, we will end up by uh, this series on what Jesus taught as we hear this message and let us ask ourselves, uh, what is it that I have to do uh, to do what Jesus taught? Because there's a lot of people in this message today that have made up a religion in their mind. There's a lot of people in this message today uh, that are not right with God. There's a lot of people uh, that have uh, ignored the foundational truths uh, uh, taught by our Lord Jesus. And so it is not what you can do in yourselves that count, but rather it is how you yield yourselves to God that makes the difference. So far, we have found that Jesus taught of two trees. Either you're a good tree or you're a corrupt tree. Jesus taught of two ways. The narrow way that leads to life and a wide way that leads to destruction. And Jesus uh, speaks also of two foundations that men build their lives upon. And this is the foundational truth uh, that we need to build our lives on. You see, because there are false prophets uh, at the gate that lead uh, to the broad way, making it easy for people to enter therein. But at the end of the way, there is destruction. The final test is not what we think of ourselves or what we uh, others may think. The final test is what will God say? You see, because uh, you're either going to hear one of two things uh, when we get before God. We're going to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant, enter, the, enter into the joy of the Lord. Or we're going to hear, depart from me, you that work iniquity. I never knew you. There's only two ways you can go. A lot of people say, yeah, all roads lead to God. Boy, I agree with that. All roads do lead back to God. But we better make sure we're on the straight and narrow one instead of the wide one. That leads to destruction. Seems like people today are not interested in what God says nowadays. They like hearing the word of the Lord, but do not like to do the will of the Lord. This generation is not the only generation that has had this mindset. Because back in Ezekiel's day, the same mindset existed. Ezekiel 33, 1-33 says this. And this is God's judgment on the mockers of the prophets. 
There's a lot of mockers out there. They mock Christians. They mock, they mock gospel preaching. They mock when, uh, you know, we say there's only one way. They mock when uh, we say that Jesus is coming back. They mock, uh, you know, at, uh, at the preachers of the gospel. But that's okay. Uh, I am not called to tickle the ears of man. I am called to preach the word of God. And so we need to understand, Ezekiel was called to preach the word of God. And uh, Ezekiel 33, 31 through 33, it says, Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and the doors of the houses, and speak to another, uh, every one to his brother, saying, Come, I pray you, and hear, what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord? Well, let's go to church. Let's go hear what God says. And they come unto thee as a people that cometh, and they sit before thee as my people, and they hear thy words, but will not do them. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they, they hear thy words, but they do them not. Oh, it's one thing to hear the word of the Lord, but it's another thing to do the word of the Lord. And uh, when this cometh to pass, and lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet hath been among them. Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to be reading 21 through 29. Matthew chapter 7, uh, 21 through 29. Matthew 7, 21. It says um, this. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you that work iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as the scribes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, I just pray, Father God, that, Lord, we would check our foundation today. In Jesus' name, amen. How can we prepare for this judgment by doing God's will. Obedience to his will is a test, uh, is a true test in Christ. The test is not words, not saying Lord, Lord, and not obeying his uh, commands. How easy is it to uh, learn a religious vocabulary and even memorize Bible verses and religious songs and yet not obey God's will? When a person is truly born again, he has the Spirit of God living within, Romans 8, 9, and the Spirit enables him to do the Father's will. God's love is in his heart, Romans 5, 5, and motivates him to obey God and serve others, you see. A lot of times, you know, we just want to uh, have a, you know, get our, our get out of jail, uh, jail free card or get out of hell free card, I should say, and say, well, you know, I'm, I'm okay and, and you're okay and, and, you know, I'm a good person and, and uh, we make up these scenarios in our minds and, you know, when we stand before God, it's not going to be like that. Romans 5, 5, and it says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. Romans 8, 9 says this, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. I've been teaching that man is a, is a spirit. We have a soul, and we live in a body. 
you see. But a lot of times, you know, people, they want to, uh, uh, they have covetousness so they can entertain the body and, and soul and, and thrill their soul and different things like that. But we are a spirit if God is dwelling in us. You see, our text says that Jesus taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. For years, uh, I have preached the very word of the Lord, and uh, this is the word that preaches with all authority in heaven and in earth. However, not all those that hear this word will do this word. In order for you to be filled with the Spirit of God, you must repent of sin and turn to God and have Him rule over, and, over your life and, and stop making up scenarios in your mind who God is. Here in this text are many people who are, are self-deceived and they think that doing things for God and being religion, a religious will get them into heaven. But Jesus said, not so. And you see, uh, uh, in, in the Garden of Eden, you know, uh, uh, Eve, she believed the lie of the devil over the truth of God. I mean, it was after uh, that, that uh, she had, was deceived by the devil and ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit that God told her not to. And she became the mother of all living. Man, are we in trouble. That's why God had to send the second Adam. His name was Jesus. You see... If you, can think, uh, if you can think with me just a minute, as we are at the judgment scene on that day, maybe before uh, people get up to the judgment seat, they will be singing their favorite gospel songs. They're going to be on their best behavior. Oh, you know, hey, this is it. We're going to be on our, oh, let's just sing that old song, Amazing Grace. They are thinking of times when they have done good works. They're thinking of times when they had prophesied in the name of the Lord. They will be thinking of the times they had cast out demons in the name of the Lord. And then comes their turn to stand before the Son of God, Jesus. According to the words of Jesus, there will be many religious people on that day that will hear the most horrifying words any man can hear. Depart from me, me, you that work iniquity, I never knew you. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, Jesus puts the scene. These people that think that their works are sufficient to satisfy the God of this universe, I declare to you today that there was only one work that satisfied the God of this universe, and that was the work of Jesus did when he died on the cross for us. He made a way into the kingdom of God for us, and, and the only way we can hope to enter in is to be in Christ Jesus. Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man cometh unto me, uh, but by, uh, cometh to the Father but by me. There are many, there are many that pass this blood-bought way, and they will not enter into the kingdom of God, but still, instead they will go to hell fire for eternity, because they thought that their way would be good enough for holy God to accept. There is only one way that leads to God. And that way is through His Son Jesus. There's only one way that God could clothe Adam and Eve. Their own covering of fig leaves He didn't accept. Said He made skins. There had to be a sacrifice of blood. For Adam and Eve to be clothed. And there has to be a sacrifice of blood. If you keep on reading... In Genesis chapter 4, you find the two kids, Cain and Abel, bringing their sacrifice before the Lord. One brought a blood sacrifice, and one brought the vegetables that he had grown out of the ground. God accepted the one sacrifice, but he did not, un he did not accept the other sacrifice. And here we have the two foundations of religion, religion by works, or religion by faith in the blood. And you see, uh, you, that's another whole sermon, that's another whole thing, but, but uh, you can study uh, on that. You see, it's uh, right in the book of Genesis, gives us these foundational truths throughout the Word of God. 
there are people that have made a decision for Jesus in this church, whom I baptized, that have, paced, uh, that have posted on Facebook that, that they are now a supporter of gay unions. My heart aches over these that sat under the authority of the Word of God and are now under the very influence of the devil. We pray for them. That God will get a hold of them again. You know, because Satan is still in the deceiving business. When you start thinking that you know more than God or that, that this word does not apply to you because after all, look at who you are. And, and you no longer esteem this to be the authority of your life. It is a very small step from comp compromise to demonic influence. And I have people in my own family that are compromised by demonic influence. And it was a small step. Oh, they were, they were raised in the church and different things. But it was a small step. And uh, hey, uh, and, and you know what they, they try to, to uh, tell Gene and I? Hey, you need to accept me and you need to uh, you know, be with me and everything. And, and, and we're not going to accept the word of somebody that's demonic. I'm gonna, we're going to accept the word of God. That's all we got is the word of God. You know, Peter says, Jesus asked him, are you guys going to go too? And he says, where are we going to go? We know that you have the words of eternal life. We have to accept the word of the Lord. You see, if you really know Jesus, then your future is one that will be in heaven. Jesus did not say he knew you once, but you blew it. So you cannot come on, come in. No, Jesus said, I never knew you. He didn't say, well, you know, I saved you once, but, you know, you didn't do a good job. Uh, and so he, did, he didn't say that. He said, I never knew you. And here's all these people thinking that they were doing good deeds for God. They were thinking, hey, I'm, man, you know, I am, I am, yeah, I, you ought to seen this devil run the other day. I mean, I cast this devil out of this guy, you know. Yeah, you can do all that in the name of Jesus. I, I don't deny that. See, your heart has to be right with God. On the foundational truth. You see. Because here in Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man which builds his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was found upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened to a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell. And great was the fall of it. See, Jesus ends the Sermon on the Mount with practical application of doing what he said to do. I mean, go back and read Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7. Do those things. Matter of fact, he said things like, if you don't forgive men their trespasses, God's not going to forgive you your trespasses. You know? He says, if you give, uh, you know, uh, and sound a trumpet, and so other people will see you, you've already got your reward. Go back and read it. Look at the foundational truths that Jesus has laid down. Jesus sends a sermon on the mount with a practical application of doing what he said to do. What God said to do. I'm a believer in the grace of God. And God will save anyone who comes to him and ask him. Uh, and how will you judge yourselves today? A relationship with Jesus is the only way that we may enter the kingdom of heaven. Now I'm going to read a parable that Jesus taught in, um, and it's found, or no, let's, let's go to, uh, before that, let's go to Luke 23, uh, 32, Luke 23, 32, and I'm going to read that, and this is a, this is the um, two ways, that this is the story of the thieves on the cross with Jesus, it says in uh, Luke 23, 32, says this, and there were also two other male factors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, where they crucified him, 
and the male fact and, and the male factors one on the right and one on the other on the left Jesus said uh, father forgive them for they know not what they do and they parted his raiment and cast lots and the people stood uh, beholding and the rulers also with him and derided him said he saved others let him save himself if he be the Christ the chosen one of God and the soldiers also mocked him uh, coming to him and offering him vinegar so you know Jesus uh, was being mocked on the cross the soldiers were mocking him the religious leaders were mocking him and saying if thou be the king of the Jews save thyself and a superscription also was written over him in the letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the king of the Jews. And one of the male factors, that's one of the, the, the ones that were uh, being crucified with Jesus. One on the right, one on the left. And one of the male factors which were hanged, railed on him saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. He was praying to God, wasn't he? He was praying to Jesus. Hey, if you be the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Does dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today, Thou shalt be with me in paradise. Jesus was saving others. Even as he was hanging on the cross, wasn't he? Oh, Jesus could have saved himself. He told Peter he could call 12 legions of angels to come and defend his position as God, if you will. But he died on the cross for you and I. And one of the thieves was saved so that no man may despair, but only one so that no man may presume. See, the other one just presumed, hey, he was okay without the blood of Jesus. He was okay. And, and hey, maybe he could flatter the Lord and just, hey, Lord, hey, Christ, if you're the Christ, save yourself and save us. He had probably heard that Christ saved people. And he was thinking the physical body salvation and that's the way a lot of people say oh god saved my physical body aren't we all like the thieves on the cross suspended between heaven and earth for the crimes that we have done against god and one of the thieves he started some sin some, some things about god <clears throat> He started seeing God and he started uh, seeing God as being perfect. But the other one answered, rebuked him, saying, Does not thou fear God, seeing that thou art in the same condemnation? He knew he was a condemned man. And he started seeing Jesus as the perfect Son of God. It says in verse 41, And we indeed justly for we receive the due reward of our deeds, but this man has done nothing amiss. Jesus, see, a lot of people, they try to accuse the preachers, they try to accuse the people of God, they even try to accuse Jesus. But here's what they can't prove. They can't prove that he did anything wrong. <coughs> because why? Because he was the Lamb of God. Because why? Because they had three and a half years to examine him. And they found nothing. That they could accuse him of only false accusations. And they derided, oh, he saved others, but can't save himself. And the soldiers mocked and everything else, but this one condemned, condemned man saw him as the Son of God. And he says, um, verse 42, and he said to Jesus, Lord, he started seeing Jesus as Lord with a capital L. Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He started seeing Jesus as the king of a kingdom that was outside of this world. The kingdom of God. And, he, and Jesus said to him, Verily I say unto thee, Thou shalt be me with thee. today, thou shalt be with me in paradise. 
Saved him right there. He did. You know this thief? He never had a chance to do any good works. And he never had a chance to get baptized. He never had a chance to go to church, the synagogue or whatever it was back then. He didn't have a chance to do that stuff. But he called upon the name of the Lord out of his condemnation. And God saved him right then. Oh, both of them prayed to the Lord. But one of them said, boy, if you're the Christ, save yourself and, oh, and save us too. Out of the predicament we got ourselves into, but we're not going to mention that. See, and a lot of times we get ourselves into predicaments here on the earth. See, two men building their lives here on earth, both were with impressive structures, I'm sure. And I'm sure both were very beautiful, but the difference was in what you do not see. The difference was in the foundation. One of the men's lives were based on the rock, and the other man built his house upon the sand. You will either have Jesus reign over you in this life or you will be your own master and pay the price someday. You see, like the old preacher said, there will be payday someday. You see, and a lot of people, they try to go around the narrow gate. Oh, I don't have to enter that narrow gate. It just will cramp my style. Matter, matter of fact, this wide gate over here, this preacher, he sounds good. You know, he says, I don't have to repent. He says, God loves me. He says all this stuff. But Jesus said this, enter you in at the narrow gate. For wide is the gate that leads to destruction. And many there be that go in thereat. But narrow is the way. Narrow is the gate. Straight is the way. At least everlasting life. You see, we need to choose to believe the words of Jesus. Luke 19. Let's go back a couple pages. Luke 19. I'm going to be reading verse 11 and following. Luke 19. Jesus is a Telling this parable. Says. Uh, and as they heard these things. He added and spake a parable. Because he was nigh to Jerusalem. Because they thought that the kingdom of God. Should immediately appear. So you know. Uh, they hear these Jewish followers. Hey here's the king of kings. You know here's Jesus. Here's the Messiah. And uh, man the kingdom of God is going to be. Just immediately appear. Well the kingdom of God hadn't been here yet. I mean it's here. In spirit, but it's not here physically yet, right? So they thought that the kingdom of God was going to uh, appear. Uh, he said, therefore, a certain nobleman went to a far country to receive himself a kingdom and to return. And he called his ten servants and delivered them ten pounds and said unto them, Occupy it till I come. But his citizens hated him and sent a message after him saying, We will not have this man, get this, to reign over us. I'm not going to have Jesus reign over me. I'm going to be my own person. I'm going to be my own. And, and hey, you know, I, I, you know, I like going to church and I like singing the songs and I like casting out devils and I like prophecy and I like all that stuff. But I'm not going to have Jesus reign over me. Verse 15, And it came to pass that when he was returned, having received the kingdom, then he commanded these servants to be called unto him whom he had given the money, that he might uh, know how much every man had gained by trading. Then came the first, saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained ten pounds. And he said to him, Well, thou good servant, because thou hast uh, been faithful over very little, have thou authority over ten cities. Pretty good reward there, right? Uh, I mean, uh, he turned the pound into ten, so the Lord says, Okay, here's what you're going to do. You're going to rule over ten cities. And the second one came saying, Lord, thy pound hath gained five pounds. And he said, Likewise to him, Behold, uh, thou also over five cities. And another came saying, Lord, behold, here is thy pound, which I have kept laid up in a napkin. For I feared thee, because thou art an steward man. And uh, thou takest up that which thou laidest not down, and reapest that which thou did not sow. And he saith unto him, Out of thine own mouth will I judge thee, thou wicked servant. I don't want to hear those words. Thou wicked servant. Thou knewest that I was an austere man, taking up that I did not lay down, and reaping that, with, that I did not sow. 
Wherefore then gave us not, uh, why didn't you give the money to the money to, to the bank? That at my coming I might have required my own with usury. Why didn't you put it in the bank so I could have interest on it? That's what he said. And he said to them, and he said unto them that uh, stood by, Take from him the pound and give it to him that hath ten pounds. And he said unto him, she said unto him, Lord, he hath ten pounds. For I say unto you that unto every one which hath shall be given, and from him that hath not, even that which he hath shall be taken away from him. But those mine enemies, which would not that I should reign over them, bring hither and slay them before me. Wow. Either going to do the words of Jesus, or you're going to hear the words of Jesus and not go. And there are a lot of people in today's churches that they come and like in Ezekiel's day, oh, you know, uh, I like the music and I like the worship and I like the praise and I like the, you know, and everything else. But they're not doing the will of God. God is secretly knocking on their heart door and says, hey, you know, uh, to get forgiveness, you need to go forgive somebody else. And, and they say, I'm not going to forgive them. To get forgiveness, you need to turn and let God reign over you. You need to give all of your life to the Lord. And they say, well, this is my life. I'm not going to let the Lord have it. You see, will you place yourselves under the authority, under, under this authority today, and live forever with Jesus? Or will you just think that you're okay, go along with the world, I'm okay, you're okay, and lose your soul forever? There's two ways. You can go. You can go the way of destruction or you can go the way of life. So I just ask you today will you go the way of life? Will you pick up the word of God and say, you know, Lord, help me to follow you through this word. Help me to do what you say and go where you want me to go. And uh, I want to be your Sir, I want you to reign over me because I'm sick and tired of sin reigning over me. I'm sick and tired of me trying to fix my life and it never works. I'm sick and tired of it. I want you to come into my life and I'm laying all my life down the best I know how. I'm laying my life down and I'm asking you to come into my life and I'm asking you to save my soul. And Lord, I, on Judgment Day, I want to be there that says that you say to enter into the joy of the Lord. I don't want to be the ones that hears those awful words, depart from you that work iniquity. I never knew you. You know, I'm really glad that my mom picked up a belt. Because she didn't let me get away with stuff. Oh, I got away with plenty, you know, but I mean, if she, you know, we weren't going to get away with a lot of stuff because my folks wanted the foundational truths to be laid a hold of my life because they knew that was the only way that the soul would be successful. That'd be the only way we could be saved. It's only when we get a hold of these foundational truths and take them into our life that we can be saved. And here at Fernley First Baptist, we teach and preach foundational truths. We preach and teach the words of Jesus. And we preach not several ways that you can be saved. We preach one way that you can be saved. We preach one way, and that's through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, you may, you may uh, be discouraged this morning. You may be discouraged in your life and say, you know, Lord, it's just not worth living. But it is worth living. Because when God comes in you, He gives you the Spirit. And then we can worship Him in spirit and in truth. Not just in... And going to church and, and, and uh, 
having soul, our soul excited for something. You see, it has to be a spiritual union with God. And the way you do that is you just be honest with God. And you say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Like the thief on the cross. Lord, when you enter your kingdom, will you remember me? You know, God saved him right on the spot. There was another centurion at the scene, at the, at the original scene of the gospel, if you will. The centurion, he was looking at everybody mocking him. He was looking at his own soldiers mocking him. And he saw Jesus die like he never saw any other man die. He heard Jesus praying, Father, forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. See, he said, Father, unto you I commit my what? My spirit. He gave up his body and his soul. And he committed his spirit unto the Father. That's why I say your spirit. That's what matters. Oh, you can find things that throw your soul. You can think, find things that entertain your body and different things like that. But it's the spiritual relationship with God that makes the difference. And, say, and you say, Lord, I want that relationship in my life. Lord, I know that I'm a hell-deserving sinner. I know that I am in this situation because of my own personal sin. And right now I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. Right now I'm asking you to come into my life and save my soul. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we just call upon you today, Father. Lord, I just pray for anyone watching uh, this uh, YouTube video. Lord, that uh, if, if uh, that's the case in their life, that Lord, through your spirit, they would call upon you, Lord God. Lord, uh, we have preached the word and Lord, the word has uh, gone out. And Lord, I just pray, Father God, that Lord, as, uh, as we come to you, Lord God, that Lord, we would have you reign over us, God. And Lord, I just thank you for godly parents. I thank you for uh, a godly mom. And Lord, uh, uh, I just uh, pray, Father God, that Lord, we can pass on the legacy and the heritage of, of Jesus to our kids too, Father. And Lord, uh, help us to esteem your word as what it is. And Lord, not let us throw it behind us and be deceived and to be thinking the wrong way that we might be condemned. But Lord, uh, we'll be careful to give you praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you till we meet again.